Hi friends, hope you people are fine. Today you can get here the top 90 questions for piping inspector. Those will be three part will be there. Each part will be 30 questions. These questions are very helpful for the piping inspector interview. So these are the very common question you can say from Saudi Aramco or some of the good companies uh, from the Gulf like Adnan. So this question are very helpful. So don't skip this video. Each question are very helpful. Let's start. So question one. What is the difference between hydrostatic pressure test and pneumatic pressure test? This is the very important question. What is the answer? Answer is hydrostatic pressure test is a pressure test conducted using water or other approved liquid as the test medium. So in the hydrostatic pressure, there is the medium is the water or any other approved liquid. And pneumatic test, the pressure test conducted using air or other approved gas as the test medium in conjunction with liquid. So the test medium is different in hydrostatic pressure and the pneumatic test is the main, main difference. Question number two, if you work on documentation, how can you work as a piping inspector? So you are a means piping document controller. So as a piping document controller, how you have to check? Answer is should have knowledge about project applicable standards. They should have means he should have the knowledge of about project applicable standard reviewing of hydrostatic packages, all documents such as NOE report, PMI report, orifice flange reports, joint summary sheets shall be reviewed. They should check. They should review. Reviewing of calibration certificate like valve manifold or pressure gauges. Reviewing of mill test certificate. Analyzing the ISO drawings, checking whether the design pressure is as per the line class. So these are the requirement you have to check if you are work as a documentation. Question number three. What is the value of test pressure in each test? The answer is hydrostatic pressure should not be more than 1.5 times for the design pressure. This is the first point. Second point, manifold pressure at least 1.2 times the system pressure but not less than discharge pressure of pump used for pressure testing. Third is pneumatic pressure, a set pressure not higher than the test pressure plus the laser than 345 kPa 50 psi. The instrument pulse lines whether piping or tubing between the root isolation valve and the instrument isolation shall be pneumatically pressure tested. That is it should be 1.5 times the design pressure of the piping system or the process equipment to which is con connected. So you understand the what is the value of test pressure should be in case of hydrostatic pressure, in case of manifold pressure, in case of pneumatic pressure. Question number four, can you use pneumatic test in lieu of hydrostatic test? It's a very important question. The answer will be, so be careful when you are giving this answer. First is pneumatic testing is not permitted without written approval. There should be written approval from the company, then you can start the pneumatic testing unless specifically specifically allowed the project standard if it is mentioned in the project standard then it is okay otherwise you need a written approval from the company when pneumatic testing is not practical that is pressure greater than 1000 psi g physical configuration testing with liquid is permitted so when pneumatic testing is not practical then definitely we need to do the pressure greater than 1000 psi g testing with liquid is permitted then that type is you can permit means you have to get approval from testing with liquid. So this is the answer. Question number five. What are the calibration requirement for pressure gauge minimum number of used and its location? So question is very important. So answer is the calibration interval shall not exit one month. Calibration certificate shall be made available to inspection personnel prior to commencement of the pressure test. So you are going to do pressure test, but before start this one, you should get you should uh, get the calibration certificate, and stickers should be available in that uh, particular pressure gauge. All gauges shall be of a range such as the test pressure is within 30 to 80 percent of the full range. So all gauges should be available. Such range should be there within 30 to 80 percent of the full range. A minimum of two pressure gauges are required for the test system. One pressure gauge shall be on the test pump and others on the test system. Their accuracy shall be within 5% of one another. So there should be accuracy of the calibration. 5% should be, it should be different, not more than that. So this is the answer. The very important question and the answer is you should be like this way. So don't skip this video. These are all important video. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स वेयर डू वी अटेंड टेस्ट प्रेशर एंड वाई वेयर वी आर वी आर अटेंडिंग टेस्ट प्रेशर एंड वाई इन विच लोकेशन दैट इज द क्वेश्चन एंसर इज वी अटेंड टेस्ट प्रेशर एट हाइस्ट प्रेशर गेज बिकॉज ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी एफेक्ट एवरी टेन मीटर हाइट वन बार प्रेशर रिड्यूस सो एवरी टेन मीटर हाइट देर इज ए वन बार प्रेशर रिड्यूस दैट वाई यू हैव टू चेक इन हाइट हाइस्ट प्रेशर गेज बिकॉज ऑफ ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन वट यू चेक इन वाटर एनालिसिस एंड इट्स वैल्यू फॉर सी एस एंड एस एस वट यू चेक इन वाटर एनालिसिस यू चेक यू हैव टू चेक इन योर बी पीरियड टू हाइड्रोस्टेस्ट देयर शुड बी वाटर एनालिसिस रिपोर्ट वट यू नीड टू चेक इन वैल्यू एंड इट्स वैल्यू फॉर एस एस सी एस एंड एस एस सो एंसर इज इन वाटर एनालिसिस यू चेक द पी एच वैल्यू एंड द क्लोराइड कॉन्टेंट ऑफ वाटर फॉर सी एस द पी एच वैल्यू इज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव प्लस माइन ऑफ फाइव एंड द क्लोराइड इज लेस दैन टू फिफ्टी पी एम आर पी पी एम For SS, the pH value is 10.5, that is plus minus 0.5, and the chloride is less than 50 ppm. So this is the very important value. You should remember this one. Question number eight: What are the types of valves? See here. So we should check the based on function. The based on function, the valve is you can say here isolation. ए आइसोलेशन टू गेट भाव बॉल भाव प्लाग भाव पिस्टन भाव डेफ्राम भाव बटरफ्लाई भाव एंड पिंच भाव सो यू शुड गेट द यू शुड गिव द एंसर लाइक दिस वे वट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ भाव बेस्ड ऑन फंक्शन दिस इज दियर टाइप बेस्ड ऑन फंक्शन दिस इज दियर टाइप आइसोलेशन गेट भाव बॉल भाव प्लाग भाव पिस्टन भाव डेफ्राम भाव बटरफ्लाई भाव पिंच भाव एंड नाउ विल गो The regulation, piston regulation, the gold plug lock valve, middle valve, butterfly valve, diaphragm valve, piston valve, and the pinch valve. So this is the based on the regulation. And now based on the non-return, that is shake valve, based on the special purpose, that is multi-port valve, flask bottom valve, float valve, foot valve, line blind valve, and the knife gate valve. And method of operation. If you go based on method of operation, that is two types of valve is there. One is self-operated valve, valves. Another is the operated valves. And based of end connection, that is the end connection where is uh, going to the pipe end. You can say that is screwed end, socket end, flange end, bar weld end, wafer type sign, and battery sign. So this is the where we can. Use the valve and what types of valve is there based on for what? This is a very important question. You can should remember this question answer. Question number nine: Where we use temporary gasket? So temporary gasket where we are using. Answer is used as a test limit during hydro test. This is the answer. Question number nine. Question number ten: What are the types of gasket? This is also very important questions. Segregation based on construction, we can say full face spiral wound metallic adding type metal jacketed inside bolt circle. That is based on construction and based on material. If you go synthetic rubber, solid Teflon, compressed asbestos, C S S S and spiral wound Teflon, A Teflon B C S C S S. So this is the based on construction and based on material. Now question number eleven: Why and how color coding gaskets are done? Why need and how you have to do color coding? Answer is color coding of gasket are done based on material specification and the suitable flange rating. It helps to check the correct gaskets that are used on flanges. Also helps to store and handle gasket easily. So we are using the color coding because of the to check the material, the correct gasket you are using or not. Also we have to do. The gasket color coding based on the material specification. Question number twelve. What is the test limit? What is the test limit in piping inspector? You should know. Answer is the test limit is the boundary up to which the pressure testing is conducted. So the test limit is the boundary up to which the pressure testing to be conducted. That is called the test limit. Question number thirteen. What are the types of flange? Based on pipe attachments, you can say slip on flange. The slip on on type of type flanges are attached by welding inside as well as outside. These flanges are forged construction. Socket weld, you can say the socket weld flanges are welded on one side only. These are used are for small bore lines only. 
screwed. The screw down flanges are used on pipelines where welding cannot be carried out. Lap joint. The lap joint flanges are used with stab ends. Welding neck. The welding neck flanges are attached by welding to the pipe. Blind. The blind flanges are used to close the ends which needs to be reopened. Reducing, that is reducing platitude supply. The reducing planes are used to connect between the larger and smaller side without using a reducer. And last is the integral. Integral planes are those which are cast along with the piping component of the equipment. So this is the call the piston pipe attachment. Now, planes are classified based on the pressure temperature also. That is class is 150, 300, 400, 600, 900, 1500 and 2500. So this is the Planes are classified based on temperature, pressure temperature, and the planes are classified also facing, flat, based on facing, like fa flat face, raised face, tang and group, male and female ring type joint. And the based on face finish, you can say smooth finish and the serrated finish. So you understand the flange types of flange. You have to get, you have to give the answer like this way. Question number fourteen. What do you mean by socket flange? Socket flange is pipe inserted into the socket of the flange and welded one side only is known to the socket weld flange. So if you want to know more about the socket welding, so you can go the my YouTube channel, you can see there the socket flange is the details in this one video. So pipe inserted into the socket of the flange and welded one side only. So you understand the pipe it is going to the another pipe that is the big pipe another is a small pipe and there is a socket and you have to weld it only outside you cannot do welding the inside so this is the socket welding flange question number 15 what is the axial gap to given for socket welding 1.5 to 3 mm is the maximum you see here you see here this gap this gap is the 3 mm so better you see here this is the gap this gap is the 3 mm so 1.5 to 3 mm is the maximum this is called the expansion joint question number 16 how to give a gap in socket flange answer place gap OLED you have to provide one OLED ring at the inside of the socket gap range is 1.5 to 3 mm if gap OLED reading is not available, measure the socket length, mark it on the pipe and you have to measure the 1.5 to 3 mm gap during socket welding. So this is the very important. Don't forget when you are doing this socket flange welding, the welding is doing the, uh, that uh, welder is doing the welding, that time you have to must check this gap prior to start the welding. Question number 17. General requirements to be done after hydro test. After hydro test, what are the general requirements you have to do? Answer. Draining of the test fluid is required. Disposal of test fluid is required. Test vents and drains we have to check. And removal of and reconnection of components and all temporary item installed for testing purpose. So general requirements will be to be done after hydro. After hydro test, what you have to do? So first you need to check the Draining, draining we have to do, release the pressure and draining shall be done the downstream side of the check valve. All vents shall be opened before draining the parallel drainage. Second is disposal of test fluid. The test fluid shall be disposed in accordance with SEP. This code is for as per Aramco or as directed by the owner or client. Test vents and drains. Vents and drains used only for the pressure test shall be plugged, seal welded and penetrant tested. Removal and reconnection of the components should be due or the permanent components should be a reconnection. So again, all temporary items shall be installed for testing purpose. That is manifold, valve, blind shall be removed. So all temporary connections shall be removed. So this is the very important question. What are the general requirements to be done after hydro test? Question number 18. What punches to be closed after hydro test? After hydro test, what punches are there? There are two types of punches there. One is A punch, one is B punch. You see, the B punches you have to close before hydro test. Temporary items shall be removed. Okay, bolt torquing should be done. All instruments shall be installed. 
and items removed for testing shall be reinstalled so this is the b point this is the very important part to be closed after hydro test question number 19 what are the instruments to be calibrated before bolt tightening so what are the instrument you have to do calibrated so you know that this is a very quick question answer is the torque range torque range should be calibrated before the bolt tightening question number 20 what are the general criteria checked for line checking so you are going to visit to for online pipeline so what are the general criteria should be checked all joint that is applying threaded welded mechanical seal are left exposed for visual leak detection during the strength test so strength test we have to check all plane thread should be get the exposed means it should be checked by visual all permanent plane joints were inspected gasket material verified properly torque so this is the line checking prior to hydro test drain shall be provided at all low points of the piping system this is very important vents and drains valve both temporary and permanent conforms with the piping class rating <coughs> so the permanent and temporary what are the drain valve is there we have to check the class rating supports are installed additional temporary support may be installed as required expansion joints or spring hangers or spring supports are provided with the temporary resistance arc strike gouges and other indication if it is there careless workmanship shall be removed by grinding and inspected by magnetic particle or liquid penetrant method so you have to check this line checking prior to done prior to start the hydro test this is a very important now next now drains are provided immediately above check valve so drains shall be provided immediately immediately next all threaded joints up to the first block valve of the hydrocarbon pipeline are seal welded thread management thread engagement has been verified and accepted the pressure testing manifold is separately pressure tested to at least 1.5 tons of the system test pressure but not less than the discharge pressure of the pump used for the pressure testing pressure gauges and pressure recorders are calibrated within one month before the test check stickers at the time of the test so you have to check the calibration line compliance with isometric this is a very important you have to check that compliance with isometric whether it is correct material utilize grade or schedule correct plane and fitting rating construction tolerance that is gr so you have to get this jerds lc350 from the saudi aramco standard so this is you can say as per the client specification client specification okay question number 21 So question number twenty one. What is this? Question number twenty one is, what are the types of CS and SS pipe? What are the types of CS and SS pipe? So see here, answer is carbon steel is STM A five fifty three grade A eight STM A one zero six grade A eight C STM A three 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 grade A grade grade one grade six. So this is the carbon steel grade. And stainless steel, you can see there is so many gradients there. This is the normal question, but sometimes the people are forgetting the CS and SS pipe types. Great. STM A three one two, TP three zero four, TP three zero four. You show all these are stainless steel grade. Okay. Question number twenty two. What are the different types of three zero four and three zero eight? Means what is the difference three zero four and three zero eight? Answer is three zero four is the chromium eighteen to twenty percent and the nickel is eight to ten percent. Whereas three zero eight is chromium twenty percent and nickel is ten percent. This is the only difference. Okay. Question number twenty three. What is tack weld? Tack weld is a temporary weld to maintain a joint alignment. So tack weld is a temporary weld to maintain joint alignment. All tack welds shall be made by qualified welder. So For tack weld, also we need a qualified welder. Recommended tack thickness is three point two to four eight four point eight mm, and length is twelve point five to twenty five point four mm. The minimum number of tack weld for three point five inches, that is below are three equal space tacks, and above three point five inch, that is four equal space tacks. So this is the answer of what is tack weld. 
Question number 24. What are the different types of fluid in AFME? Explain. So if you if you asking if they are asking the explain then you have to do the answer you have to give the answer category D fluid service category M fluid service and the normal fluid service another is the high pressure fluid service the four types of fluid service is there category D is the non flammable that is non toxic and non damaging the human tissues that is temperature range minus 29 to 186 degree centigrade category M is the toxic and flammable and high pressure fluid is based in class 2500 rating for specified design temperature and material group and normal fluid side bills that is not subjected to D or M and that is not also toxic. Question number 25 for the verification or traceability of materials what are the different procedure to be used. So answer is you are checking one material verification or traceability what are the procedure you have to check for verification that is for PMI one is positive material identification to check the proper material composition marking and color coding that is very important spool and spooler stamp stencil clearly mark with a permanent marking method that is for the packaging procedure you can say the label traceable everything marking marking and packing procedure Question number 26. What are the difference between a pipe and the tube? That is also very important question. Answer is pipe is identified by NPS and thickness is defined by schedule. Whereas tube is identified by OD and thickness identified by bearing on wire gauge. So this is the different. Question number 27. What are the documents in hydro test packages? Answer table of contents the very important question table of contents should be there safety instruction sheet for critical services flow chart for test packages should be there pre test punch list that is for test procedure pressure test diagram related PNID line list pre test punch list checklist form so all this should be in the pre test punch list also QAQC documentation part that is well inspection summary sheet, well map, NOED record, as built drawing, isolation valve test certificate, plain joint inspection report, internal clean list. So these are the all requirement for the hydro test package. Also here you can see the requirement pressure testing the verification of temporary gasket should be checked verification of test blind rating. Checklist for verification of system readiness for testing, calibration certificates for pressure gauge, calibration certificates for pressure and temperature recorder, test manifold certificate, water analysis report, pressure test med report, and system layup certificate and the reinstallment of final assembly inspection. So all these requirements prior to hydro test, what are the forms should be there in your packages? Question number 28. What are the general requirement for pressure gauges? So, what are the general requirement? Answer is a minimum of two pressure gauges are required for test system with accuracy of five percent of one another. This is the general requirement of pressure gauges. You should remember prior to start this test. Pressure gauge and pressure recorder are calibrated within one month prior or two test. Sticker applied indicate the latest calibration date. Test gauge located at bottom of any equipment system under test of enable reading test pressure inclusive hydrotetic height. So this is the requirement. And last is all gauges have the range such that the test pressure within 30 to 80 percent of the full range. So this is the what you can say general requirement for pressure gauges. Question number 28. Now question number 29. Question number 29. What is this? Question number 29 is why water certificate is necessary for hydro test so why we need the water certificate for hydro test to know the chloride content at ph value water certificate is necessary so we should know the chloride content and pH value for water certificate this is a very important part for this hydro test question number 30 the last question what are the difference between a punch and b punch so list of unfinished work you can say unmatched item according to the drawing and specification before hydro test that is called the one is to be done before hydro test another is to be done before mechanical completion there is 
two types of punch. One is A punch, one is B punch. That punch, what is this? Unfinished work or unmatched item according to direct. Means some items you are not completed, some of the work you are not completed prior to hydro test. That is, we can separate two punches. One is A punch. If there is a review for hydro test package, if there is a punch A, you have to close prior to hydro test. If there is a B punch, we can close after mechanical completion, after hydro test. So, this is the A punch and B punch, the explanation. So, you understand these 30 questions are very helpful. Next, we will upload tomorrow or day after tomorrow another 30 questions. The total 90 questions will be there. Thanks a lot for watching the video. So, those people still not subscribe my channel, please watch and subscribe and this is my YouTube channel link. You can go there and you can just subscribe and you can get, you will not miss any videos in future and press the bell notification to get the first video when I am uploading. So, do not miss any videos in future. And the same time, please press bell notification to get first video. Thanks a lot. Take care.